Yo, what's up, y'all? Michael here, Shy City Yakker. It's been a while, but I'm glad to be back. Uh, I think we all know how life can get crazy, things come up, so I haven't been doing a lot of videos uh, at the end of last year and even starting early into this year, although I do have some coming real soon. The brown fishing on Lake Michigan was incredible um, right after Ice Out. Those videos are coming up, but I want to start back for 2018 with my uh, YouTube channel with uh, got a new boat, PA-14. 2018 edition reverse drive 180 upgraded to the version 2 they did some tweaks to it um so they kind of got some things fixed for it and um not only do i have the new boat but i also have new electronics and i've been waiting to get my hands on this um when they announced it i was excited for it but you know in the tech world this is old saying never buy the first generation of anything typically because that's when they're working out the kinks the bugs and so on and so forth and now that it's been out for a full year um i've seen um better uh things happen for it updates and you know working out the kinks i decided to get my hands on the oh this beast right here raymarine axiom this is a nine inch this is the one that has chirp sonar down vision size scan and 3d built in all built into one uh, head unit. You don't need a black box like Lowrance and additional stuff. Um, you just gotta get the transducer, right? Now on my other kayak over here, I have the uh, Lowrance HDS7 Gen 3 running a total scan transducer. And that's a big transducer, but I think Rim Marine has managed to blow them out of water. Look how big, this thing is huge. That's what she said, I know, I know. This thing is, uh, maybe around nine inches or so maybe nine or ten inches and it's pretty wide it's probably close to three and a half four inches wide this is not gonna fit in the uh pa uh transducer scupper that's uh you know really kind of made for loran stuff what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna kind of have to maybe modify some of this and all that stuff but in order to make this work i had to get one other piece of gear burley pro Raymarine Axiom cover. All right, this is gonna allow me to uh, get the transducer up in there. It's It acts like an additional um, placeholder. It's gonna keep it on there. And they say that it keeps the transducer even, all right, even with the bottom of the hull. So it shouldn't be sticking out. Very unlikely it's gonna hit stuff, but there's always a chance. That's why there's a protective outer coating. So we're gonna do the install on this right now all right so everything you need to do the install comes with the burly pro even the uh screws and washers and all that stuff so remove the existing uh transducer plate we're gonna install this one and yada 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 so there goes the uh everything conveniently packaged up attention uh 2017 hobie owners in 2017 hobie updated the lawrence ready mounting plate please use included larger screws for 2017 newer so i'm gonna have to use these instead so that's clutch that would have been so screwed so first we're gonna install the transducer adapter all right so it looks on the diagram like we're gonna have to remove the top part of the uh transducer there's a uh you see it right there there's a little um allen wrench and luckily i have one thing around all right once you uh screw with the uh, allen wrench you're gonna go ahead and just slide this whole top part assembly right off a little tight there it is okay that's the top mounting bracket you don't need it so you're gonna keep the core of the transducer. Here's where we're at. You're gonna thread this big, thick, heavy uh, cable. It's gonna lead over into your uh, head unit uh, through the mounting bracket. And then if you see here, right, it's got like that thin plate. That basically kind of is the uh, same width as, as that other uh, piece of the uh, transducer that we slid off. So that's actually gonna fit right in this groove right here perfectly. So just line it up, push it down, and it slides in perfectly. So that's how it's gonna attach the plate to the transducer. You're gonna line up the two holes. There's two screws, one's gonna go up here, one's gonna go here. And that's not gonna be that main connection to that. Important thing to note, all right? Just like I had issues with uh, some of my other um, through holes, getting the back nut over through the connector part of the transducer, same kind of issue with this one because it's kind of thick, about an inch in diameter. And the locking nut kind of gets caught right after the uh, right after the female connector part right here, right, right around here. I just put a little WD-40 on there and I just turned it like you was know, screwing it on and it slipped right over it. So if you have the same issue, you don't have to force it down. Just uh, lube it up a little bit and just twist it down and it popped right through it. 
and uh, all the uh, everything's intact. All the uh, threads on there are intact, which is important. So we get a good tight seal when we screw it back in with the through hole. There's a little tip for you, all right? All right, uh, there's the uh, finished install. That um, transducer cable is thick, so it was really a pain to get it under here and it was really a pain to get it underneath here and work with it all because the thick cable kept on hitting this bar and there's very little flex on this room. It's really stout. But I uh, managed to get it in there. It's tight. You're going to need the one of the biggest size uh, um, one of the Hobie through holes. You're going to need one of the bigger ones that has the, the bigger holes in it to fit that cable. I think it's probably the largest single hole that's in the little kit. So that's the one you'll need and we're good to go. We got it all routed through, sealed up. So let's move on. All right, so we got the uh, transducer router through here. Now, really, the question is where I want to place my fish finder. And it could easily go out the sides, come up on the H rail right there. I generally prefer mine on the uh, center mast right here. Right in front of me, it's in my line of sight, and I can always glance up as I'm, as I'm uh, pedaling. I know where I'm going. I can just glance down and see, see the, uh, the uh, fish finder. And now that it's a 9-inch, it means I have a, it'll be easier for me to see. Um, up front compared to my uh, HDS7 on the other unit. So I'm gonna put the uh, adapter there, shove them in there, and then we're gonna have to punch a hole out here for um, the cable to come out of. All right, y'all, so as it turns out, when I started this project, I didn't have all the parts that I needed uh, to complete this um, um, installation. And so it's a few days since I started this, I'm back and I have the parts that I need. First piece I needed, and I actually thought I had extra through holes um, and I had a bunch of the plastic pieces, uh, uh, the soft plastic that the cords go through, but I didn't actually have the hardware part, right? Like the locking nut and, and, and the, uh, the uh, top part. Um, but for this, for this thing, because these cables are so thick and I want more options, I went ahead and ordered the three-way um, through hole plugs. And uh, this will give you an opportunity to run the big thick transducer cable through it, the power cable for the unit, and then I have one more additional spot open and I can, you know, run, th run something through there in the future if I need to. So I have that flexibility. Um, this is a little bit of an easier install because you're basically just screwing in threads into the plastic. Uh, but what we do need to do is punch a hole through here and I'm gonna do it right in this area right over here. Um, just so you know, for the three-way plugs, you need a one and three eighth inch hole saw. All right, one and three eighth inch. Uh, for the single through hole that Hobie makes, it's a one inch. So it's a little bit of a difference. I had to go get this piece um, after I ordered and got this delivered from ACK. Um, so I have that, I have everything else in here. I have the power cable for the Axiom, which is um, a little thick. And actually, this is gonna require all three, now that I think about it. Here's the power cord, right? But then this unit also has, or this cable also has an additional uh, I believe this connects to the NEMA 2000. So, um, even though I won't be using it, uh, I'm going to have to route it through there anyway. So, this looks like all three of these are going to be used. There you go. Go ahead and run the uh, transducer line through the front. All right, at this point, I'm going to leave all that excess cable just hanging out of the kayak. What we'll do at the end, once I route it through and I see, see how much of the, uh, the cord I need to have out so that it can connect here comfortably. So, there's a little bit of play in case I move my finder forward or back. Um, and I don't have too too tight of a uh, line. Um, once we get that established, then we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the uh, excess line and we'll zip tie that to the center mast here in the hobie and keep that um, just clean and orderly inside the kayak. All right, so here's the moment of truth. The part that everyone fears, which is punching a hole in a perfectly good and brand new kayak. Uh, it's a little unnerving when you first do it. It, it was on mine on, on my other kayak when I first had to punch holes in it. These are not cheap by any means. And so you wanna be cautious um, when you're doing it. Uh, so, you know, the good thing is, is that um, this works. And so any of you that are going to do this for the first time, you know, uh, just pay attention how what you're doing and go step by step and you shouldn't have any mistakes. Um, the good thing about punching these holes is that you can always seal them back up with another through hole and you'll be good to go. Size it up because the hole itself is one thing, but the through hole kind of spreads out beyond that. So I want to put it too close up here so when I go to put this in there, it, the uh, I can't screw it in. So I need to drop it down a little lower so there's enough room for this. So I'm going to take it out of the packaging just so I can get an idea of, of how much room it's going to take. And uh, it comes with all the screws. Everything you need to install this comes with the package. All right, keep that in there. 
and then it comes with a little this is a little washer that helps to make the seal watertight okay so don't lose this part and then there's the hard plastic part so kind of see right around there okay all right let's do it look at that two seconds done there's a little uh, plastic from the kayak, so you want to hold on to that, you can. I personally don't, it's not a big deal. Uh, some guys like the plastic weld stuff again, or use it for something else. You can, I, you know, again, it's a matter of preference thing. All right, so we got that hole punched. So it's the power cord. Right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect all these pieces. And the big old monster transducer cable. Run that out. And we'll connect that. So the way I have my uh, fish finder set up now, this is about normal position, right? Where it's gonna be most of the time. But what I wanna do is go ahead and um, move it around to see how much play it needs from the cable, right? And then that's what I'm gonna kind of uh, make a note of. And that's how much cable I'm gonna have kind of pulled out. So that if I do need to move it forward or lean it back, there's, there's enough uh, play for it to move around. So we're gonna drop it down a little bit. That's good right there. See, all of it's fine right there. I'll move it back. We might need a little bit of room. Something like that should be fine. So, secure it down. Cool. I got the uh, all three of the main cables plugged in there, and I still have a third one open as an option. We're gonna go ahead and seal that one with just the straight, uh, the one that has no holes in it, we're gonna secure that one, right? Make that water tight, shove that in there. And then later on, if I need to add another cable through here, all I have to do is unscrew it, slide it through there, uh, figure out which one of these needs to be uh, used, and then I don't have to punch any more holes. So that's why I like this option right here. Okay, don't do what I just did, y'all. I put all the cables through there and I forgot I need to thread the cables through here first. This is the part that's gonna make the uh, watertight seal around the edges, so I just completely screwed that up all right so now that we got everything <laughs> routed through here properly we can go ahead and screw this in secure it and be done all right so i think the camera might have turned off when i did this installation part if it did i apologize but let me just run you through what i did ran the cables through each side uh put the backing plastic right this is this what's going to seal the edge so no water gets in through here uh ran that through there and then when you put the screws in you don't have to go real tight. You don't want to over thread the plastic, right? It's just going there nice and snug and you're good to go. Um, it's not, a, it, it's not moving. And when you do screw in the screws, it helps when you put your hand behind the, behind the uh, plastic because it, this will flex um, just to support it. So it makes it easier, clean uh, punch through in there. Just make sure you don't put your fingers directly behind where the screw is going to pop out of. Um, other than that, it's installed and now I have plenty of room and play with the cables there to move my fish finder front and back or move it any direction. There's plenty of cable out and we're good to go. There it is, I'm done. Raymarine Axiom 9 installed with the RV100. That's that big transducer underneath it using the Burley Pro uh, uh, cover. And uh, this will also work for the Raymarine uh, Axiom 7 inch. Um, all the same. I mean, the only difference is the unit size difference, but if you have the RV100 transducer, it's all the same. Um, you're gonna need that Burley Pro cover. It's the only way it's gonna work. Uh, and then we ran the lines through here, use the Hobie three-way through hole to uh, get all the cables through here. Still have one additional um, space in here. If I need to run an additional cable out from inside the hole out to whatever, I wanna do something else, I have that option. But the other thing I wanna say is when you're, when you're screwing in the screws, use your hand, put it behind the plastic, make sure to clear it away from where the screws are gonna come through. And that helps to keep the uh, plastic here from flexing when you go to screw it in. It gives it a better, uh, gives it a better thread into the plastic, all right? It's better, more secure. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. It's, it's in there pretty good. Everything's watertight. So we're good there. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just take all the excess cables here from the transducer, roll that up, zip tie it, stick it to the center hatch uh, to keep things nice and neat in the inside. And then uh, I just got to uh, run the battery power. Simple butt connector, shrink wrap. I mean, there's plenty of videos on YouTube covering how to do this. Uh, but I am going to be running an Aqua 10 amp hour battery for this uh, unit, which I know does work. People are, might be wondering. Um, but in a uh, video, and I'll link below uh, that the... Uh, 
the uh, kayak fishing god uh, <laughs> Jim Sammons himself did with the uh, Raymarine James McGowan, I believe his name is, from Raymarine. Um, he runs a uh, Axiom 9 on his kayak and with the Nakwa 10 app, and he said he gets over eight, eight hours. So I'm going to definitely test that out myself, but uh, if they say that it works, then I'm going to run with it, and we're going to figure that out. There it is. Install done. So if you have a PA and you are interested in the Raymarine, that's how you install it. And one last thing, consider subscribing. Definitely appreciate it. Throw it a like, leave a comment. And if you have any questions, link below is our official Discord. If you're not familiar with Discord, it's a dope, dope app. Um, you can use it on your mobile device, on the web browser. It's like taking IM instant messaging and taking forums and combining it. And it's super dope and it's absolutely free. So consider joining it. It's where I'm hanging out at. And we can chop it up more about kayak fishing, fishing in general, and anything you have questions about with these installs. I'll be more than happy to help you there. Consider joining. All right, I'm out of here. Peace.